Hey friends, my name is Jake. Welcome to Canadian Cutting Edge in 4K. Hopefully this works well with my new computer. Hopefully I can edit it just fine. We're looking at the Best Tech Lizard. Let's take a look at this guy. We've got a D2 blade, G10 handle scales. You can also get it with a satin bevel and bead wash flats. Four different, no, eight different, six, four, eight, six, that's the number, yeah, six is the number between four and eight. Six different ways of getting this knife. Three colors with the black wash, of course the natural and orange and lime green. They've got a lime green G10. With the uh, bead blast satin finish, you can get the black with orange or a green and orange or a beige finish. $52 uh, is the standard price in most places. Uh, of course, at White Mountain Knives, you save 10%, which is $5.20 off when you buy this from them. In Canada, I found this at Blades Canada for $69, I think $69.99. And at um, Lamnia, they've got the black and orange with the satin finish for 53 and a half euros. But uh, most stores like Knives and Tools have it about 65 euros. I didn't find it in UK. So I'm gonna have those links down below for where you can buy it, including uh, White Mountain Knives. My discount code to save you 10% is CCE. And I use that code at a number of stores that I deal with. So if you're interested in a shorter knife, this lizard might be something you wanna learn more about. And if you're thinking about buying this, I really think you should listen to this because I found some issues, one main issue that really annoys me quite a lot actually, but a lot of good stuff on here as well. So maybe that annoying thing won't annoy you. We'll see. Keep watching. We're gonna to go to the tabletop in just a moment. All right, let's start with our size comparison. I've got the Ontario Rat 1 here. Uh, line up those pivot pins. Clearly, it's a smaller knife. It's not a terribly small knife, though. Look at the thickness of this. It's a fairly deep knife. A uh, lot of size that way. The thickness of the handle, yeah, it's about the same as any other knife, but it's quite squat. Most of the lizards I know of, you know, they're more long, slender kinds of things. This is a stubby little lizard. Um, so I don't know, does the name really fit? Maybe, maybe not. Depends on what lizard you're thinking about, right? The uh, blade shape here, it's a very unique blade shape. We've got a hollow grind swedge here. We've got a fuller come hole for, you know, lightening the blade a little bit. And you can use that for deployment as well. Bit of a riser up here with some jimping on it. The uh, blade is a flat grind. It comes nice and thin back here. So I'm gonna call this thing a wildly modified Warncliffe. I don't know, I didn't even look up what other people are calling it or what the manufacturer is calling it, but that's, that's what I'm gonna call it with a forward choil option. So it's easy to sharpen it right to the end because the plunge is very short here. And I gotta go deal with my dog. So that's pretty much the blade part of it. Let's talk about the flipper. There we go. You can see the flipper right there. You've got some jimping on the front of it, just three lines milled into it. Uh, it works in light switch mode, just fine. And of course, pushing it down on an angle, just fine as well. At least now that I've got it fixed. If you watched my video series, and I am sorry, I didn't put out the third video yet uh, about warnings of things that can go wrong. And I will do that, but my life just got crazy for a little while there. This knife was on that video when I talked about how I fixed the detent. The detent was too strong, which meant it took too much pressure to get it to open up. And then when it did, it just flew out very, very hard because I had to put a load of energy into the flipper. Now it's just right. You know, it doesn't take too much pressure to flip open the knife, but it consistently opens well and gets to the lockup. 
Lockup is very good. It's hard to see on a black knife here. The engagement is early, but solid and has room to wear over in time, so that's really nice. There's no blade play side to side, up and down. Lockup is done very well. We've got ball bearings in there. I'll show you that in just a little while. The handle. The handle shape, it's got a nice arch back here that helps it fit in the palm of the hand very well. So you can get a good solid grip that way. We've got a backspacer with some big blocky jimping in it. That helps. The liners are all black. Uh, the edges are just ever so slightly rounded so that they're not annoying and sharp. We've got T6 screws here, button screws that are sunk into G10. And if you've been with my channel for a while, you know that I really dislike button screws sunk into G10. But they're functional, and uh, I had no problem when I took this knife apart and put it back together a few times, actually. You can see on this side, though, on this screw right here, you know, some of the coating, the black coating, has started to wear off a little bit. Not a big deal. Pocket clip is a deep carry pocket clip. Uh, it uses button screws, but it stands off enough that there's no problem getting this to sink into a pocket properly. And let's just demonstrate that right now. The edge climbs over and it is flattened on the top right there. So there you go. It goes in all the way to the bottom and you don't have much of a knife sticking out. Quite nice. And it has enough tension pushing down that it holds on very well. Pivot screw. Uh, it's just a T8 on this side, and there's the, uh, I guess that's supposed to be a B for Best Tech, and it's a good screw. We've got this lines milled into the G10, at least this natural one. You can just, bear, uh, maybe you can see it. I'll put my fingernail into the groove of one, and it just follows the arc and comes right out the end. And over here, you know, it goes up, and then it comes down, and then it goes back. So it's a very nice texture, not too aggressive, but it's a different texture than you usually find on G10, and I quite like that. There's no lanyard option with this knife. A lot of people are going to miss that, I think, because a lot of times these smaller knives, people like to have lanyards to assist in the grip, but what Best Tech did to assist in the grip was they put a forward choil on, so you still get... My hands are within the extra large range, just barely though. They're fully large and there's grip left over when you use the forward grip. So there's not really that big of a need for a sharpener's choil. Let's uh, talk about the sizes and dimensions and then we're going to go over the pros and the cons that I was talking about. Let's get my tape measure across here. Had to reach for it. As long as this is on the screen, we're talking about the measurements and such. Like I said, it's D2, you, the Rockwell's around 60 on the Rockwell C scale, and D2 is pretty good. Uh, the black coating on here is a way to protect it from corrosion resistance. I'm not so fond of the bead blast. Some people seem to think bead blast helps steel corrode a little more easily. I'm not sure where I sit on that, but there is that. I'd recommend the Black Wash, one of the three Black Wash versions. The weight of this knife, 118 grams, no, 115 grams. That's four ounces on the nose. The sharpness from the factory was 185 bess, a bit worse than average, but still fairly sharp. The cutting edge length is 53.4 millimeters, 2.1 inches. Blade length, tip to the closest spot on the G10, 65 millimeters, 2.56 inches. The thickness of the blade up here at the flat section, 3.15 millimeters, 0.124 of an inch. So the slightest little bit under an eighth of an inch. The blade depth, the widest point is right about here, and that is 34.6 millimeters, 1.36 inches. How thick is it behind the grind? 0.46 millimeters, 18 thousandths of an inch. That did help with the slicing quite well. The grind angles. This side is an average about 19.2, and this side is 23, 21.3. And this side's got a max variability along its length of one and a half degrees. And on this side, it's less than a degree. So 
fairly well sharpened in terms of the grind angles that they did on this knife. So no big complaints there at all. The length of the handle, and it's measured this way, 93.6 millimeters, 3.69 inches. The grip area, if you just count this grip area between my thumbs, it is about seven centimeters, two and three quarter inches. If you add the forward choil, it's about 10 centimeters or four inches. The thickness of the handle, and I mean that by the depth this way, it's widest right there, 13.8 millimeters, point, no, thickness of the handle is this way, you silly Jake. 13.8 millimeters, 0.544 of an inch. The handle depth is widest right about here. 35.8 millimeters, 1.41 inches. When the knife is closed, the widest point is right here. And that is 45.4 millimeters, 1.79 inches. And the total length of this knife measured this way is 152.1 millimeters, which is just a bit over six inches depending on where you measure to. It can be six inches on the nose right there. If you measure over this way, it's a bit over six inches. It all depends on which way you measure. And I've already talked about the price. The price is not bad. $46.80 US from White Mountain Knives after the discount is pretty good. That equals about $58 Canadian. And like I said, you can buy it for 69 Canadian at Blades Canada, which is Warriors and Wonders. So you're paying an extra 11 Canadian dollars to buy it in Canada. That's not too bad of a premium in Canada. I'm still going to buy it from Warriors and One. Uh, I'm still going to buy it from White Mountain Knives, I should say. So problems, the detent. I think that's probably a one-off problem. I've bought enough Best Tech knives to know that they don't do that usually. So I think it just happened to be this specific one had a very strong detent and if you watch those videos, it's quite easy to fix a detent that's too strong. It's easier than fixing a detent that's too weak. So that was fixed. Um, what else do I like on it? I like this G10 texture. Uh, I like the pocket clip. Uh, the funky blade, just because of how funky it is and cool. I like how it looks. Uh, I like that teardrop fuller. You can... Whoops, I was, I was watching the camera. You can flick it out using your finger in behind there, and that works just fine, uh, right or left-handed. The um, lock-up on it is very good. The lock release is nice. You've got a slight chamfer right here, so when your thumb gets in there, it releases. One thing that's common on so many liner locks, and you can see it on this one here too, you can see the buildup of stuff back in here behind the lock release. And that's just skin it's because your skin's always being shed and it gets a little pinched behind there. So one way to avoid that or at least mitigate it a little bit is just to round this off so that the inner edge of the G10 doesn't have a uh, edge where things can catch on as easily. Not a big deal. The forward choil is a good size. So many times knives have the forward choil that's too small and you go to grab it and you're constantly in danger of cutting yourself right there. Nope, this one's a good size. What are the cons on this knife? The main con that really bugged me and bugged me quite a lot is this flipper comes back and cuts off this area right here. So when I'm using the knife, the flipper tab right there it's just biting into the side of my knuckle right there. And it's just digging in. And that's a fairly sensitive spot. You know, it's not super sensitive, but you've got bone right nearby. You don't have much muscle tissue over it or for padding. And it just digs in there. And if you just use this back way, the same thing, that spot is just digging on the side of my knuckle. It's, it's just a mistake. I don't know how they could have made it better. I guess they could have made this flipper come back a little bit more and, and uh, you know, given a little bit less of a light switch method kind of flipper and just more of one that you push down on. Uh, this, you know, light switch method might not work as well, but 
most people do this anyways. They hold the knife something like this and they push down and open the knife. And if they're not looking at the screen and looking at their hand, if they're focused, they can do it no problem. But you can just see it like this. There's a space here and most knives have that open there, but this comes back. So that's the big con on this knife. Does that mean I would not recommend buying it? No, but it does make me think twice about buying it. If I knew this before getting it, would I have bought it? Probably not. Now that I have it, you know, does it annoy me enough to, you know, just want to get rid of it in a hurry? No, not really. It's not that big of a major annoyance, but it does bug me. You can get your hand in a little bit deeper. And then instead of having this sit right here, you have it sit over here uh, like this. And then it doesn't bother as much. But I don't always hold my knives like this. I often hold them more like this. And then it just becomes a pain. The grip back here in the G10 helps. The grip of the jimping there helps. It's a decent knife. And like I said before, the detent was too strong and the minor annoyance of the buttons. That's pretty much what there is. So let's take this apart and show you the insides. I don't think I'll show you the taking it apart because that makes the video much too long. So I'm going to skip to showing it to you open. Okay, I've taken this thing apart several times and I've had no issue with stripping out any of the screws. Uh, the screw heads are deep enough that the screw goes in deep enough. There's very little play on these screws, so that's a good thing. Here's the phosphor bronze cage with the ceramic ball bearings, which are very nice, and the ceramic detent ball is right in there. A little bit of skeletonizing here. Oh, by the way, the balance point on this knife is exactly where you'd want it to be. Not a big deal on a small knife, but it's there. And it's a little bit like a captured stop pin in that it's close to the pivot and sort of a hidden stop pin, but not really a captured stop pin. The G10 backspacer, let me take it off here. There we go. It is optional. You've got the bit of a standoff right here, so you could use it without the backspacer. And in that case, you could probably tie off a lanyard to the back post because, uh, let's put this on here. It comes close, but if you tied it very tight, it might not cut into your uh, paracord back there. But that is asking quite a bit. Because all you have to do is pull the paracord down this way, and then the tip is going to cut into the paracord. But, like I said, you don't have to use the backspacer. It goes together sturdy and sure without it. So that's pretty much the video. Thank you so much for watching my video. Thanks for liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing to the channel. Uh, let your friends know that we're in 4K now. Not that that's really that big of a deal. But if you use a TV that's on 4K or a 4K monitor, let me know. I'm very curious to see how many of my viewers actually benefit from this being in 4K. If it's almost nobody, or if nobody responds, I'll just keep doing it in 1080 because I can do the editing more quickly that way. Till next time, remember friends, always cut towards your chum, not your thumb. Bye for now.